Ron Brown was under investigation for corruption. Uh, basically, he was uh, taking bribes from the Vietnamese to open up a trade with the Viet Vietnam. Uh, and he was murdered along with 30 some odd uh, businessmen. And the first thing they did with the bodies was cremate them. Because if you can do an autopsy, you can prove how a person died. Yes. And the proof would have been that the plane was blown up. Uh, Ron Brown's and John Jr.'s, uh, they claimed John Jr.'s plane, he just uh, somehow didn't know what he was doing and just dove the plane straight into the water. No, it was blown up. He was murdered. And my theory is that Hillary made a call or sent one of her uh, peons to uh, one of the uh, bad men or the uh, top men of uh, David Rottenfeller, begging him to murder John Jr. so she could get the Senate seat from New York because there's no way she could have ever defeated John Jr. Uh, in uh, a, an election for the Senate seat. They had to get rid of uh, John Jr. for Hillary to get into the Senate because the plan was uh, she was going to uh, run for uh, the White House a second time. Remember she ran uh, with her uh, partner in crime, uh, Bill William Jefferson Blight IV, that's his real name, Clinton was his uh, name of uh, his uh, stepdad that he adopted. And she had served eight years as co-president. Remember when she was running uh, with Bill the first time, she said you get two for one. And, you know, you can have a co-president, like a co-pilot. Well, she served her eight years. Legally, uh, under the Constitution, she cannot run for uh, the White House. But since the Constitution uh, was uh, destroyed in 1861, when the War of 1861 uh, began, and the Southern uh, representatives of Congress walked out of uh, Congress, uh, the representatives and the senators, uh, the Constitution has not been in effect. A lot of people don't know that. We have been running... Well, not we, but the uh, New World Order gangsters have been running the United States government as a corporation, and they actually incorporated uh, the government uh, in 1871. <laughs> That's right, and in 1933, uh, we went into receivership under Roosevelt, yeah. and, and yeah, the banks Roosevelt. became the holders of the notes. And guess who's the collateral uh, for the notes, uh, what the collateral for the notes are? The people. That's yeah. right. That's right. Now, yeah. Ron, I, 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 you, you are accurate in your history. Somebody asked me what what qualifies you to do this. I said what qualifies you to ask. You've done your research. You've done your research, and and I can I've done my research, and I can vouch for everything that you've said. What I want to talk about this half. I've been reporting on this whole new world order, as you well know, for over almost twenty five years. And. Uh, I've got, uh, I, I, I ask myself, what could I do? Now, I, I started this and came up with this concept when I lived 30 miles from the nearest town. And uh, the, uh, the answer I came up with is a, somebody I'm sure that you, you know pretty well to or have heard of, Richard Kelly Hoskins. He said the foundation of every civilization is the self-sufficient family farm. And I came to the conclusion if we could grow our own food, generate our own electricity, work together somehow, because the, the enemy uh, wants to divide and conquer. They want the blacks against the whites, against the Mexicans, against the uh, Jews, against the Muslims. They want us all fighting amongst each other. If we could establish a farm or a ranch that uh, we could work together on and grow our own food and generate our own electricity. I call the concept Liberty Village for where I was at. If we could do that, we what would we need the banks 
the energy companies, the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, and the oil companies for? Well, I'll give you an example of a group of people who have been doing that for over 200 years. Uh, they're called the Amish. Yes. Uh, they live totally self-sufficient. They don't go to grocery stores uh, for the most part. They do a little bit, but uh, they grow all their own uh, food. They have their own uh, livestock. They don't use electricity, so they have no need for the power grid. They don't need to make any because they don't believe in using electricity. Uh, they've been doing uh, fine for over 200 years. They're not in debt. Uh, they're farms. Uh, they're prosperous. Uh, this is how patriots have to uh, start living. And it's hard to get a bunch of people together to um, buy a farm and, and operate it uh, because the people always fight and squabble with each other. The best thing to do, your idea is great, the best thing to do is for uh, two, maybe <coughs> three different families uh, to get some land, farmland, ranch land, and become self-sufficient. And then uh, if we had, let's say, a thousand different uh, groups that got together and uh, got their own uh, farms out there, uh, it would put a <coughs> big dent in Big Brother's uh, plan because they would have to actually come in and physically uh, take the people off those uh, farms and ranches and put them in concentration camps. Ron, they and have the, they profit. have the, they, we paid Halliburton, Brown and Root, $350 million to refurbish these camps that were already established on the military bases. Right. So we've yeah, got that. We've got these things back. already. Yeah, and and they're so they're they're ready and waiting for us if they want to round us up. They just suspended posse comitatus with the NDAA. They mean they want to be able to use the people against them. I mean the the soldiers against us. Right. Uh, but I don't think anything uh, is going to come down martial law, uh, national emergency. Uh, to where they will start rounding up uh, large numbers of people. I think what we saw with Katrina was a, uh, a dry rehearsal where they herded the people into the stadium. Uh, what is that, the, the Louisiana the dome down there? Uh, I forget the uh, football stadium or whatever they, they rounded them up in. <clears throat> but that was a dress rehearsal, and uh, people who were in that said that the military went house to house, and they were supposed to be uh, telling people to leave their house to go to the stadium for their own safety. Well, that's a lie. They weren't telling people to go to the stadium for their own safety, they were rounding people up and forcing them to go to the stadium because there was an exercise for down the line when they go around the whole country rounding people up and putting them in concentration camps, not stadiums. And the first thing they did when they came to a house is they asked the occupant, do you have any firearms? And if the person said yes, they rushed in and they searched the house and they grabbed the uh, firearm. If the person said no, they pushed them aside, rushed in, searched the house, and grabbed the, any firearms that they had. <clears throat> and some of the wealthy people living in the uh, good, so-called uh, good areas uh, of Louisiana and uh, the bordering states that were affected, um, they had weapons to protect themselves from looters. 
Well, the military said, I'm sorry, you cannot protect yourself. We're taking your guns and we're taking you to the uh, stadium, and that's it. Uh, we will probably see another one of these uh, hurricane disasters and the same thing happen <coughs> again. Ron, when I, right before my little suspicious accident, and by the way, that accident occurred because I had just called home and asked my son, where do you need me to go next, son? He told me exactly, go down 24th Street to McDowell, turn left, go to the wheel shop. Okay, two blocks where I got to McDowell's where I got hit. They have the ability to tap our phones. They can monitor the phone. The phones can act uh, as a GPS. Mine's got a GPS on it. They can find me anytime they want me. Yeah, um, well, that's uh, what a lot of people don't realize. See, the old ways, before cell phones, uh, if a person was using a phone and they wanted to trace the call, they had to triangulate, uh, and it took like 30 some odd seconds. Well, they don't do that anymore. They, they don't triangulate <laughs> phone calls. Now, they're also, calls. they're also saying that they have the technology that with your cell phone, you can actually see through walls, things like that. There, there's a tremendous amount of, of, of technology available to it. But on the other hand, Everything's a double-edged sword. You know, the internet they use to, and the computers that they use to keep track of us, to number us, uh, to make the whole Mark of the Beast thing work. But it also gives us the ability to communicate. Right. Well, that's, here's the thing, Clay. In, in my book, Big Brother is Watching You, I go through all of the technology. And I, I explain that um, Google... Uh, is one of the big, big brother uh, companies, and they're not only uh, had their spy satellites up there, uh, you know, Google Earth, yes. you can actually get on and you can look at your house. Yeah, you can see everything except, uh, you can see everything except what, uh, Area 51? Yeah, <laughs> well, there's a few other areas, but uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> you used to be able to see Area 51. When Google first started, you could actually go on uh, Google Earth and you could uh, look at Area 51, but the government, when they found out, uh, they shut that down because Google, remember, yeah, what, it is not a uh, company that was created by a couple of college students um, who were just geniuses and they came up with this brilliant idea. Google was created by the CIA. It is a CIA front corporation. The CIA has tons of front corporations, just like Air America during the Vietnam War. You've seen that, oh, yeah. that the movie, Air America, with uh, yeah. Robert Downey uh, Jr. And, I, and, I, also, uh, I also have in my book the whole story of Operation Watchtower that was George Bush running the cocaine in to his partner, Bill Clinton. Yeah, to a media Arkansas. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, and there's a good book uh, written about that. It's, it's, uh, what is it? Uh, Bush, Clinton, and uh, oh, what's the title of that book? Compromised by Terry Yeah, Compromised. Yeah, uh, CIA, Bush, and Clinton. Uh, got, uh, got my signed copy here, you know, so. Yeah, uh, I forget the author of that book. That's, uh, Terry, uh, that's uh, Terry Reed. Terry Reed, yeah. Terry and Jen documented. Reed. Uh, the drug smuggling through Mino, Arkansas, and the main purpose for Clinton, and here's what a lot of people don't know. Bill Clinton is a zero, a nobody. He came out of nowhere to be governor of Arkansas. Uh, he was very young, I forget how old he was, when he uh, first became governor of Arkansas. Well, why was he chosen to be governor of Arkansas? He had no experience. Uh, he was a bumbling fool, kind of like uh, George W. Baby Bush. Uh, really couldn't do anything of any uh, value. Uh, Hillary was another bumbling fool, had no experience, shot her mouth off all the time, putting her foot in her mouth uh, over and over. Uh, why were they chosen? Well, it's my belief uh, that 
Bill Clinton, William Jefferson Blight, the fourth, was chosen because he was a bastard son, and we know he was a bastard son, but there's a possibility he, he was a bastard son of one of these uh, rotten feller uh, sex maniacs running loose. Uh, in his bio, his, his book, that he finally had published, uh, he talks about his mother coming back from England during World War uh, II and coming back and supposedly uh, being with her husband, having sex, uh, you know, and creating Bill Clinton. Uh, William Jefferson Blythe. Well, the problem is, if you look at the, the dates, uh, he, actually in his book, this is not some conspiracy book, in his book, uh, you figure out, you find out that his mother was pregnant before she got back to her husband. So she had sex with someone. She never said who it was. Yeah, sure. no, no one knows who it was. Uh, it could have been just some bum she picked up in a bar. Uh, it could have been uh, a rotten a seller, a sex maniac. No one knows for certain. But one thing is for certain is that the rotten sellers have run Arkansas ever since World War II because when uh, Winthrop Rottenfeller came back from England, uh, he didn't fight in the war. He was just in the war over there in England. Uh, he told his brothers, uh, the five uh, grandsons of uh, John D. One, the five sons of uh, John D. Two, that he was a homosexual and that he wanted his uh, lover to live with him in New York. And the boys, his brothers, uh, says, you're crazy. You're insane. We're not going to put up with that here in New York. We're not a sex pervert. Uh, get out of here. Go buy a state and live in it. So he bought Arkansas, and he was governor for a while. And then along came uh, Clinton, Bill, uh, Sick Willie, as I call him. Not Slick Willie, S L I. CK, but sick, really, <laughs> S-I-C-K, because he is a sexual pervert. He's a serial rapist, serial adulterer. Uh, there's no telling how many women he has raped, how many women he has had sex with, how many bastard children he has spawned. Uh, but whether he was a bastard child of the rotten feller or just they saw him and they liked him because he was a sex pervert. They chose him to be governor, and then um, then he covered he covered up he covered up Arkansas, and and Bush covered up for him. Uh, so they had a working partnership. Yeah, but here's the thing: is a lot of people don't know this. Before he became governor, he went to Oxford. Remember, he's the big uh, Oxford uh, uh, boy. Yes. He was over at Oxford. Well, while he was at Oxford, this is in England, the big uh, university over there, um, the Rhodes Scholar, you know, the Rhodes Scholars, they go there for at least a year or more. He was hired by George Herbert Walker Bush as a CIA asset. And... Hillary was also hired as an asset. Now, this is not an agent. They were not agents. They didn't go through the training. They're an asset. The CIA has millions of assets all over the world. All an asset is is someone who will do something for the CIA and get paid for it. They were CIA assets hired personally by George Herbert Walker Bush and maybe... Because Bush, the daddy Bush, is one of the top lieutenants of the Rottenfeller crime family. That could have been why uh, William Jefferson Blythe was chosen to be governor of Arkansas. All right, now let me stop you here for just a second. 
this is all history here, and 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 you're 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 very accurate in your history. But where we are, we you you agree that we're in a war. Yes. And war is directed at the American people. In case of a single outbreak of smallpox in a major metropolitan area, says FEMA, we'll need 400,000 well-armed, well-trained, organized, disciplined troops to control the American people because some of them just won't follow orders. But where, and, and you've talked about the New World Order, Bush and, and Clinton being a part of that. That's a true, too. That's, that's uh, again, that's accurate. Who is pulling the strings by this? I'm behind this whole New World Order plan. It's been going on for thousands of years. Do we have the same people? What part do the Jews play in it? And and I've got on the cover of my book here. Before we somebody starts screaming that uh, the protocols are forgeries and all that, the Bible says that Jesus warned us about the Jews who say they're Jews but are not. I contend that that's exactly where we're at right now. I've asked, now there's a few things I said I can't tell my listeners or my audience. I can't tell you whether whether the government took over the mafia or the mafia took over the government. I can't, <laughs> I can't tell you whether the press calls the shots for the government or if the government tells the press what they can print. And I can't tell you whether we run Israel and Israel is our puppet or if we are theirs. I'd like to get your input on that. Now, now, well, I, I will, let me qualify that by saying that the little Jewish lady that lives next door to me ain't my enemy, and she better not be yours. Yeah, I don't actually get into um, the Jewish aspect in my book, Big Brother is Watching You. It will be uh, book number three. It's, it's the title of that book. Uh, volume will be Big Brother Identified. I don't get into uh, the background of these gangsters going back thousands of years, uh, the Jewish connection or any of that. Uh, that's going to be another book in the future. But if you want me to give you uh, my take on that, uh, I can yeah, I'd like to, I'd like to know. I mean, I we have to prepare. We, you know, part of the thing is the Bible kind of warns us. It gives us the information that we need. It warns us about the tares and the wheat. You know, we can't just go out go out killing people because of the color of their skin or or what religion they were born into. I don't believe that makes us as evil as anybody we're trying to uh, we're trying to stop here. Well, uh, let me just uh, give you. Uh, my take. Uh, I have an article on the internet. Uh, it's too too hard to explain how to get to it uh, or give you the ad address. It's just easier if you want the link to it. Just send me an email. Uh, go to freeworldfilmworks.com. Uh, You'll see an email button there. Uh, I think at the bottom. Uh, You'll see it on the front page. Just send me an email. But I have an article that goes into this. Uh, uh, it's Revelation 2.9 and 3.9 where uh, John is warning his readers that there is a group of people uh, of the synagogue of Satan who call themselves the Jews but are not. And I go through and give you the complete history from the beginning uh, with Jacob and Esau all the way up to uh, present day of who the people who call themselves Jews are and they are direct descendants of Esau and I explain uh, how that came about uh, and why they are not real Jews uh, according to the Bible and there's two branches uh, of Jews uh, in the world today, uh, Clay, you know this, the Ashkenazi and the Sephardim. Well, the Sephardim are uh, descended from Esau. The Ashkenazi are just Khazars. They have nothing to do with uh, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Esau, or uh, Judah, or any 
of the uh, people mentioned in the Bible. What are they? they uh, are they Luciferians appearing and, and trying to appear like normal people? Well, both the Ashkenazi and the Sephardim uh, the religious ones, now not all of them are religious. The religious ones are worshippers of Satan, just like the Bushes are, the Clintons, Tony Blair, the Rotten Shields, the Rotten Fellers, they're all worshippers of Satan. Uh, but <coughs> what it basically is, is that when the southern tribes of Israel went into Babylonian captivity. Only uh, 42,360 came back 70 years later. Well, when they went in, uh, they married the people in Babylon. And for 70 years, you've got two or three generations, depending on how uh, old a person was when they got married. So when they came out, uh, virtually everyone who came out of Babylonian captivity except for the extremely old geezers in their 90s or 100s were either half Iraqi, half Hebrew, or uh, three quarters Iraqi, one quarter Hebrew, or seven eighths Iraqi, one eighth uh, Hebrew. Well, when they went back to uh, Palestine, the sons of Esau had taken over because when Nebuchadnezzar took all of, not all, but most of the uh, people in uh, Judah captive, he only left a few thousand of the poor behind to be farmers because when Babylonians uh, conquered a, a people, they shipped most of the people out uh, to other parts of their empire and left behind a few uh, farmers to till the land because they wanted um, production, food production. And I, okay, actually, what that, happened? Go ahead. Go ahead. We're, gonna, uh, we're out of time. We're out of time here, Ron, and I'd, I'd like oh, to okay. I'd like to be able to hear more, but I got I got to cut this off here. And a couple of these okay. things off. Just to has been completed. stay with me for just a moment here, and uh, we will uh, get off on uh, this one and that one. And your show is scheduled to start in 22 hours. Yeah, thank you, lady. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. We got that one done. We got that one done. Okay, I got uh, I got uh, a few more minutes here. Let's tell people where they can get your book. This will go up on uh, YouTube. You can put out the links, and uh, the links to your site are up there, to your books are up there, and to Anthony's films, and you're running a special on the films. Uh, go ahead and give out that information. Okay, and I'd like to I'd love to have you back here. We'll be t we'll talk more about doing this thing with uh, Jeff and uh, the other people. So, uh, okay. go ahead and shoot this up, and we'll finish this uh, this recording. Now. Okay, it's uh, freeworldfilmworks.com. If you click on the uh, catalog button, uh, you'll uh, go to the catalog. We're running a special uh, until June one. 2012, uh, half price on some of uh, the Anthony J. Hilder's films. Uh, you can also go to freeworldalliance.com, and uh, there's tons of news on that site. Uh, there's the DVDs, my books, uh, news, uh, and you can educate yourself, share the links with others, and wake up.